This is Joey of Underage Packers welcoming you back to the Underage Packers podcast. I'm, as always, joined by my fantastic co-host, Big B. Woo! What's happening? Going good on this Victory Tuesday. Our first Victory Tuesday oh. of the year. Our last, look, couldn't keep the streak going on Victory Mondays, but I'll take a Victory Tuesday as well. It's even better than a Victory Monday, in fact. Don't oh, have yes. to deal with that Monday, the pesky Monday. On today's episode, we will be going through quarter by quarter, just recounting, uh, relapsing your memory of the great game that occurred last night at Lambeau Field, 1265 Lombardi, going quarter by quarter, and then giving some quick thoughts at the end. So let's start off with the first quarter. Two, three and outs on the defense. A great start by them. I mean, this is really what we you love to see you don't see them it, it's kind of the opposite of 2019 where they they get worn out because they're so bad and really the offense had a lot to do with that but the defense gets worn out because they can't get these stops but now in the first quarter we saw some great stuff them getting some fantastic three and outs not letting Julio Jones Calvin Ridley get some big plays in there and that's what we talked about last uh last Friday that we got to limit these explosive plays with Todd Gurley, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, and they definitely did that all throughout the game and definitely through the first quarter. Uh, we then got a wide-open touchdown to Aaron Jones. That was a fantastic start to the game. As you always say, Big B, getting off to a fast start, having some uh, great drives on defense, then hitting them right back with a touchdown. And then I'll let you recap this last point, just because I know this is literally all you've been talking about since it occurred. Yes, I've been talking about this. All right. The best play of the year, the best catch of the year, Mr. Jamal the Goat Williams with the catch of the year. Oh, my goodness. That was nasty. Woo! Oh my! Oh my God! That was just that was disgusting, amazing, beautiful. All right, Jamal Williams is the goat. Lambo Field announced today that they are indefinitely suspending fans, but if we can have Big B as hyped for every single player as he is for Jamal Williams, that like he will be hyped about Tyler Lancaster getting past the block, like literally. Get Big B in there as the Packers mascot. I can. I don't know how you get a, any better reaction than that. Or get him in a broadcast booth, something. I mean, that that is just priceless reactions right there. Oh, yes. And he's so convincing, too. You're thinking, wow, man, maybe that catch was very good. I mean, it was very good. But you're thinking, holy cow, is this the second coming of the catch um, with the 49ers and Cowboys? Holy cow. Yeah. It's like I've been waiting for that all off season, all year, and it finally happened. And Working just... with our friend Luke Neal. Let's move on to the second quarter. Uh, the defense letting up a long drive opposite to what they did in the first quarter. Two fourth down conversions for the Falcons late, leading and finishing off with a field goal. So that, that is pretty good, and we'll talk a little bit about Ben Don't Break a little bit later. And two with touchdown Tanya in the second quarter. So many tees, so many twos there. Love to see. And those weren't even short tight end passes like you usually see um, for tight ends in the pack soft. Those were big plays. Those were both 20 yards. He he had to make some adjustments there. Great drop by Robert Tynan. Um, let, let's move on to the third quarter. The Packers put it away with a touchdown to no other than Robert Tynan. This was a great play here. And if you go back and watch the coaches' film on NFL Game Pass, you will see him like flip over, and then yep. get right back up and score that touchdown. That is literally something you would never see from Jimmy Graham. All right. I mean, oh, yeah. and last night I just felt so much hatred for Jimmy Graham because of how well Robert Tanyan was doing and just the fact that Jimmy Graham was starting solely because he, he was getting a lot of money and can't put that guy on the bench. It's pretty much the same thing with Billy Turner. But, yeah, great to see Tanyan putting it away. Uh, then you have Zadarius Smith getting some big plays. And, you know, all these people, all these idiots talking, oh, Z's off to a slow start. All right, I'm here to tell you right now, he is not off to a slow start. He is still a beast. And if you ever doubt that, leave. Yes. Bye. Great. Bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. We, we had, Bye-bye. It was a great ride with you. 
Yeah, great game by Z. Second, all through the second, third, and fourth quarter, uh, he got a uh, strip sack in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, all that really happened was Ryan got a garbage time touchdown and Mason, Money Mason, making another field goal. So uh, what were your gut thoughts on the game before we get into just breaking down some other stuff here, Big B? My gut, um, Jamal Williams is a growing-ass man, and I love him with all my heart. And that catch was nasty, by the way. I mean, that's kind of a weird, like, maybe weird way to put phrases, like a weird combination well, I, there. But, I mean, I think I, I think it passes. I, yeah, I think it was a really great game for the Packers offense, and we'll, yeah. we'll get to talking about this offense. So I, I guess let's start about that right now. Obviously, and this is what we talked about all of uh, this past Friday with the one and only Jimmy Christensen, they, they – like we said earlier, they didn't let up those big plays. They had a great game from Jair Alexander, limiting Calvin Ridley to a, a monstrous, I'm trying to think of the word here, but it was a magnificent zero, a grand total of zero catches for Calvin Ridley. Great job, Jair. And, yeah, so for the offensive side of things, you look at they they were so efficient. And I don't really buy into this whole idea that they're necessarily – plan like they're planning oh you, you take away Lazard you take away Adams I don't think that's necessarily what they're doing but there is definitely something to be made about the fact that Alan Lazard goes out they got Devontae Adams out the past two weeks they had to face a lot of injuries on offense and they are still they haven't hit the effing break four games through three 30 points for the first four games that beats the 1919 Curly Lambos Acme Packers record. And by the way, that team was pretty insane. I mean, they were going off against the Oshkosh Sausages, you know, and beating them 52 to 3. So, so yeah, and that's really the highlight of the game here is that they didn't need the wide receivers. They didn't need no star first round wide receiver. Who needs wide receivers when you got because you got the GOAT? Not, not what I was exactly thinking, but. And there's definitely something to be made there about Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones. Uh, they both have some really impressive acrobatic catches through these first few weeks. I mean, what do you think? What do you it. make of Jamal Williams? And you got to give a little bit of love to Aaron Jones in the passing game. Both are dominant, both very effective. Mm-hmm. I trust both of them when Rodgers starts throwing to them. Um, Jones has done a lot better job. At catching the football, Jamal Williams, of course, has improved this entire off season because yeah. he's the goat. He has no days off because goats have no days off. I yeah. don't know where I'm going with Three, this, but it's 367 days a year for Jamal Williams. Yep, for all the goats. Yep. Yeah, I, I definitely you make a good point there about trust. You, you, yep. you don't feel this nervousness inside, and that like all of our short life. <laughs> We're called the Underage Packers Podcast for a reason. All yep. of our short life, we have never known a good Packers running back. Well, I mean, the only one is really Eddie Lacy, who is 300 pounds. We all know he ain't going out there for a pass. You know, yeah, our friend Ryan Grant was pretty good for us for a short term, and hopefully Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams, at least one of them, is here for quite a few more years. But it is just so <laughs> incredible to see them going out there being so reliable with Aaron Rodgers, I love. We all love to see it. <laughs> Let's talk about Nat Lafleur. I believe they showed a s- statistic last night that he is in company with Paul uh, Paul Brown, George Seifert, and Bill Walsh for the best starts in NFL history to coaching. He's uh, counting the playoffs. Uh, probably eighteen and five. Like, that is an insane stat, and it gets, like, it's almost like I feel so, or no, it would be 18-4, and four, I believe. 18-4 and four through his first two seasons up to this point, and there there was a lot of bull crap when he got hurt, hired a lot of hoorah that he was never a head coach, even though he had, he had a year behind him of play calling. There was a lot of hoorah, a lot of hootering and hollering, to quote my dad there. Of in just panics, like I we and I think that really just goes to prove our and most loyal fans' idea of just letting it play out for the love of God. 
and yep. we're looking great. And I, I think really last last night games was one of Matt Lafleur's best coached games. We didn't put up the most points. Right. <laughs> put up thirty, but we're just get so used to forty burgers. But we didn't put up fifty points. It was an outrageous game for stat wise. I mean, Rogers Tiny had some great stats, but he was just able to fully capacitate the the Falcons offense. He was able to get this offense going and he was able to play a full four quarters, which we never saw with Mike McCarthy. I don't think I don't know if you can ever point to a game. Even the Super Bowl they won wasn't a complete game by the Packers. I mean, what what are your thoughts right now, 22 games in, of Matt LaFleur? Um, well, he's a great coach. I love him. Um, sexy head coach in the NFL. Yes. Um, he knows how to win football games. He knows how to get the players motivated. Mm-hmm. Brian Gutekinds knows how to bring them players in who have the great energy, yep. the hype. Um, yeah, and I think just everything is just meshing well with Rodgers and LaFleur. That was a big thing last year. Yeah, yeah I love I love Coach LaFleur. Yeah, I, I, there is definitely a point there about he is the sexiest coach in the NFL. Um, and, yeah, he, like, he knows how to win. That's all you can say. Yeah. Last year we were apparently the most fraudulent 13-3 and team of all time, according to the haters. But he won 13 football games, and he did it. I guess convincingly, he did a very good job last year, and he's off to a great start in 2020. And I, I think, uh, yeah, obviously having Aaron Rodgers helps, but he's also done some really great things, especially last night what we saw of being a coach outside of Aaron Rodgers, which I absolutely love. Before we get to my final and last point, which we'll probably have a, a better, bigger discussion about, Devontae yeah. Adams' loss was definitely more felt in this week's game than in Detroit. Uh, in the second half of Detroit and the whole game against New Orleans, we definitely had to improvise with Bobby Tanya. Wasn't a bad thing. It turned out to be, but yeah, and I think the biggest, or I'll ask you this. What do you think? Where do you think we hurt the biggest without Devonte Adams? I guess I'll say the big play aspect, like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's exactly my thoughts is just on third and 10, we're sitting there. We know yeah. Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams can do in the passing game, but we're not going to send him out there on a half X screen to get ten yards on third and ten. And we have we're lining up Darius Shepard, Malik Taylor, and MVS. It's not a good look, and it's not very promising on third and long. But hopefully, we get Adams back soon. Let's end it off here. I, this is just a comment I felt so strongly about last night. So there is just something so special about each individual player, each individual coach on this team. Like, they like last night especially. You just sit there and you're like, "Wow, this is great stuff, man." Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I feel for as much as there's to be made about missing tackles, Mike Pettin not being right. There, I just feel like every player so far has played to their best, their full potential. Like, you have Chris Barnes and Ty Summers having to come in and start after they've never started a game before. And that position was already weak. And I think they held up okay last night. I, I feel we didn't hear their name at all last night. So that's always a good thing, unless it's a fumble or an interception. Yep. Everybody, we had a lot of next man up situations, not nearly as many as some other teams, but we've had a lot of pretty, pretty decent amount of injuries to big players here. And I just, there is just something so special. I feel like Rogers, the whole offense, really connecting with Matt Lafleur and what he's trying to do there. I love it. Do you feel the same vibes I'm feeling, Big B? Yeah, it just feels like a whole different like energy from like last year and the years yes. past there's just a different feel to this season mm-hmm. like COVID aside like just it just feels like different feels like we're going to the super bowl feels like we're winning it all yeah Meantime, time world champion green Bay packers coming soon <laughs> coming to a theater near you this february i just feel like we are we are here on our little home at 1265 Lombardi with all of us Packers fans. We are here 
and the rest of the league is doing their own thing. Packers are doing their own thing from the league. They're dominating every week. I, some other teams are dominating, but I just feel this this team is unique. It's awesome. I love each and every single player on here. Um, like, there's not – we're only four weeks through, so there's a lot of ball game left for you to be Lots. irritated by some players. But right now, I, I love all of them. I love what they're doing. I love it. Um, and I think that's a great place to end off episode 26 of the Underage Packers podcast. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will see you later. Go Pack Go.